The headlines, a man's charged with having four pistols. Frendel Stewart tells of the time he intervened to force a driver to pick up trash. And the West Indies under-19s seek to reach World Cup final. Welcome to Nation News for Wednesday, February the 10th, 2016. Private and public sector leaders, Barbados's best employers, BBE, is back. Organizations, large or small, private or public sector, enter BBE 2016 now. Benefit from an independent staff survey and much more. All interested in improving staff engagement and productivity, here is the catalyst to get you moving. Our theme, maximizing productivity, building a better Barbados. To enter, visit our website or call us at Caribbean Catalyst. A St. Michael man has been remanded to Dodds by a magistrate after he appeared in court on firearms and drugs charges arising from a customs check. Police said 26-year-old Rico Antonio Greenwich of Freehill Black Rock went to the port last Friday to clear a consignment of goods. They said a search by customs revealed four automatic handguns and 1.8 kilograms of cannabis, that's about four pounds. Mr. Greenwich is charged with unlawful possession and importation of firearms, possession, possession with intent to supply, trafficking and importation of cannabis. Prime Minister Frendel Stewart, the garbage enforcer. The PM has been telling in peace at the time he used his position to force a citizen to pick up a piece of trash. Speaking in Parliament on Tuesday night, Mr. Stewart said he was on the way home one night when someone tossed a box from the vehicle in front of him. He asked his driver to put on the siren, stop the person, and made them pick up the box. The Prime Minister chided Barbadians for their approach to waste disposal, saying they just wanted to dump their trash on the public. He said the country should seek higher standards than that. Mrs. Stewart was speaking during debate on a bill to formally assign responsibility for the Sanitation Service Authority from the Ministry of Health to the Environment. In his contribution, Finance Minister Chris Sinclair said government could not continue to shoulder the burden of the $100 million it costs to dispose of waste. He said an effective financing policy had to be put in place and the waste disposal industry needed to be regulated. Opposition leader Mayor Motley has cautioned government about the rigid stance it continues to take on the proposed Cahill Energy from Waste plant. Ms. Motley said that although government was not borrowing money for the project, there remain great levels of opposition to it and the public should be engaged. Environment Minister Dennis Lowe said government would not be stepping back from the project and all of the relevant regulatory agencies would be consulted. Producers of the award-winning Bank on Me series, the TV series, are hoping for more innovative ideas coming from this year's participants. Speaking at a briefing for the third season, Managing Director of Blue Waters Production, Alison Saunders, said that it's the only way forward for a small country like Barbados. We really would like every business in the show to come out of it being more innovative, for example. So that is something that goes across the board, whether you're in the cultural industries or agribusiness or not. You don't have to be. You can come from tourism. You can come from um, any area, really. But we want to see that you are trying to innovate your business, to be innovative, because that is what will take us forward. We will only be able to compete from a small country like Barbados if we are innovative. We can't just be doing the same things in the same way and expect to get different results. Ms. Saunders said this year's series will focus on areas identified by government for national development, including cultural industries and agriculture. Barbados is expecting good numbers for a crop over from Trinidad and Tobago, according to Culture Minister Stephen Lashley, who led a delegation to Port of Spain. The National Cultural Foundation and the Tourism Marketing Company teamed up to launch the Crop Over We Go promotion in the two island nations' capital, targeting television, radio and entertainment events during and after Carnival. In sport, at the Under-19 Cricket World Cup, the West Indies will meet House Bangladesh in the second semi-final at the Sherry Bangla National Stadium on Thursday. That's actually at 11 o'clock Barbados time with historic finals berth on offer. 
in the West Indies, if the West Indies make it to the final for the first time since 2004, also in Bangladesh, it will be a boost of sorts for the struggling game in the Caribbean. If Bangladesh win their first semi-final at any level, it will possibly be their biggest cricketing moment after getting test status in 2000. Even though the West Indies lost a bilateral series against Bangladesh in the early half of January, the manner in which they have peaked towards the business end of the tournament has been remarkable. Their best victory coming in the quarterfinals against Pakistan. And one quick note before we leave the sport, the West Indies, the Trinidad and Tobago, I should say, CPL franchise, which is co-owned by Bollywood superstar Shah Rukh Khan, has been rebranded as Trinbago Knight Riders from the previous name of Trinidad and Tobago Red Steel. So Trinbago makes sense. Hmm? Trinidad and Tobago is quite a mouthful, don't you think? And finally... A store owner in Chicago has been charged with selling fake urine to help people pass drug and alcohol tests. The Cook County Sheriff's Office says Tahir Yusuf allegedly sold a kit called You Pass to an undercover officer on Monday at the store. The kit included hand warmers that authorities say are used to heat the synthetic urine before submitting it for testing. <laughs> and that's Nation News for Wednesday. For more news, log on to nationnews.com, as well as YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. And remember to pick up your Daily Nation on Thursday or subscribe to our e-paper.